Oh, I have a question. Is artificial intelligence a friend or foe of inclusion? On International Women's Day, we want to explore this topic as we try to unpack AI's potential in bridging the gender gap and erasing biases in the tech world. Now, to help us understand the crucial role of women in the AI revolution, we're now joined by Ruby Pryor. She is the founder of and CEO of Rex, a consulting firm specializing in user experience research and strategic design. Ruby, welcome to the program. Now, we are seeing this surging demand for AI, but at least one talent pool has remained largely untapped in this, as part of this growth, and that is women. Uh, according to a, a report by the World Economic Forum uh, in 2020, it says that women hold less than 30% of roles in artificial intelligence globally. So four years on, how much has changed? Thanks so much. I'm really happy to be here. Unfortunately, four years on, we still know that women are underrepresented at every level of technology inside of these organizations, in particular in leadership and in technical roles. This is also the case in entrepreneurship, where in Southeast Asia, we know that only about 1.5% of all venture capital funding goes to ventures with an all-woman team whereas over 85% of all VC funding goes to ventures where the founding team is all men. So what is driving the sustained gender gap in AI, Ruby? And, and basically, why do we need more women in AI? We need more women in AI because the technologies as they exist today are perpetuating gender bias. So we see this in applications of AI, such as in recruitment, where an AI algorithm may be more likely to male candidates over female candidates, or in healthcare, where we see that AI algorithms can misdiagnose women and suggest the incorrect treatment when, uh, when a woman is the subject of the, of the algorithm. We, we also see this in areas such as financial services, where women may be given a differentiated credit limit compared to men. So it's crucial that we have more women in these roles so that we can work to eliminate bias from these models. And there's also gender bias in technology. Uh, perhaps you could help us explain this and share some examples with us, you know, perhaps examples that we may experience on a daily basis but may not immediately notice. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've said it exactly right. Some of these examples can be really subtle things that you might not notice. So one that I see time and time again when I'm filling in online forms is that when they come to list the genders, they'll list male before female, despite before M in the alphabet. This may sound like something really little, but it's just one example of a lot of different ways that we can see gender bias perpetuated in technology. Another one that many of our viewers might not come across so often is in virtual reality technology. So we are seeing a greater proliferation of virtual and augmented reality technology in education and in the workplace. Unfortunately, this is a technology that can affect women and men differently. So women are more likely to experience cyber sickness or when using this technology. So this is just another example where we see the uh, inequitable access to a form of technology. Those are very interesting examples. Um, wh where does this bias come from, though? And why does all of this matter so much when it comes to uh, gender equality? It matters so much because these technologies underpin more and more of our daily lives. With some of those AI examples I gave right at the beginning, we're seeing AI influencing do from our healthcare to our financial products to our role in the workplace. So it's more important than ever that we are creating technologies that are equally accessible and are not going to have ingrained bias. When it comes to what organizations can do to tackle this, the first thing is they need to make it a priority. If the leadership sends a really clear signal that this is a priority for the organization to address, that can align incentives right throughout that company. We also need to see organizations making it a to hire, retain, and promote women throughout their organizations. And lastly, they need to make sure they're building it into the process. Between the time a technology is an idea all the way through to when it is actually deployed into market, there are so many moments that teams can check in and ask themselves about the inclusivity. Often we see tech teams are doing checks like, how is this going to backwards integrate with our tech stack? Or how is this user experience going to align with our brand guidelines? I propose that technology companies really 
or they are actively having questions around inclusivity. What does this mean for our users and will it be equally accessible by all of our customers? Uh, Ruby, it's interesting that you earlier uh, mentioned about retaining women in these fields because that is another challenge that women experience after overcoming the first hurdle of getting into STEM. Why are they struggling to stay in these fields and how can companies do better uh, to retain their female employees? A really great question. So something that's really critical is providing flexible work environments and providing environments that really work for um, mothers in particular. So mothers are the ones often that really bear the brunt of a lot of this in the workplaces. So it's really important that we have excellent parental leave policies. And even though we're talking about women here, something that can really help to move the needle is making sure that um, male carers also have access to really, uh, really good parental leave in workplaces as well, because this can help to address that gap when it comes to caretaking responsibilities from day one. So really looking after working parents is something very practical that organisations can do to make the experience of women in those workplaces better and increase the likelihood of retaining them. Ruby, before we let you go, um, earlier I know you talked about aligning our priorities, um, but how else can we make sure that the future is brighter for women in AI? What sort of policies or initiatives can be put in place you know, to foster diversity and inclusivity in the tech world? I, I really hope that the future is bright for women. There are more and more fantastic women in this field. And I think part of it is spotlighting the amazing efforts of those women. Unfortunately, we see that that's not always the case. And for example, we've seen um, certain media institutions publishing lists of top thinkers in AI and leaving out even a single woman. There are amazing women making strides in this space and we need to make sure we're highlighting them, funding them, every opportunity to succeed. Ruby, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate your insight. Uh, Ruby Pryor there, founder and CEO of Rex.